And so first of all, you should know that a syllabus is a legal contract between yourself and the instructor. And so it basically sets forth the expectations of the instructor for the student. And uh, that tells you how you succeed in the class. Super important. It's one of the most important things that you can read in every class because it tells you how to get an A. When I was an undergrad student, I was very average. Eh, some A's, some B's, I think I got a C or two. When I was a graduate student, all A's except one B. <laughs> ah, that one B. That was close to an A too. And the difference was is I learned to read the syllabus and figure out what I needed to do to get the grade I wanted. So the syllabus is the most important thing to read. What's the most important thing to read? What's the most important thing to read? What's the most important thing to read? You all need to read the syllabus in every single one of your classes. And then you get your game plan. And then you take an Excel spreadsheet which lets you work with numbers and you figure out how to calculate your grade in every class and you keep track of all the scores you get as you're going through. And you can see my grade to date, and then also what my grade will be if I was to stop working in the class right now. So you can always be monitoring how am I doing in each class. And I've got a 97, a 96, and an 82. Guess where I'm putting my efforts? On the 82. Bring that up to a 92. The others kind of fell down to 94, 93. Cool, keep that in balance. One drops to 87, mm, a little more effort. Back to, you know what my goal was when I was a graduate student? I wanted the lowest A possible. 90.1%, that was my goal. Because there's no difference on the transcript between 90.1% and 99.9%. That extra 9.8%, I'm putting that effort into the class where I had 81, which with 9.8% brings it to 90.8%, right? Like, why do extra effort if you're not getting paid anymore? Like, just 90.1% with the spreadsheet. So that's how technology allows you to optimize. And if you could use technology to make better decisions you're going to be more successful as a student and everywhere else. So spreadsheets, one of our things we'll learn is how do we use spreadsheets to keep track of our grade? You shouldn't approach that as, okay, another homework assignment, cool, done, forget it. That's like the most important thing, number two, that you'll get out of this class, is calculating your grade and using a spreadsheet to do that, like, wow. And if you get that bigger concept and then take that with you through your whole life, using analytics to drive strategy is the way they talk about that in business. Analytics analysis to drive strategy, what I'm going to do next. Right? If you can figure out how to use analytics to drive strategy, man, that's good stuff. It's going to help you everywhere. What's the data show? What should I do? What direction should I go? You already do it some. Right? Like go on to Yelp. Okay, let's use some data to figure out where I want to eat. Analytics to drive strategy. But do you use, do you use Yelp to its fullest extent capable? Here's my favorite. Search for restaurants. Set my range. I want $2 prices. Sort it from highest rating to lowest. I'm willing to drive five miles. I'm willing to pay one or two dollars, not three or four. And I want the one that's rated, rated the highest. And it's open now. That's a good selection of restaurants. Great Indian restaurant out by Herndon and the railroad tracks where that overpass is, you know, out there by GB3. It's amazing Indian restaurant. Like I went there, and I, my wife and I were the only white people, and the rest were just people speaking Indian and Indians. Analytics to drive strategy. You have a better life. You get good grades. You have a better life. 
eat at a nicer restaurant with better food. You have a better life. You have a safer car. And technology can allow you to do all that. You have a better life. You're ordering the right parts at the best prices. All right. So I always think that this is just going to be an orientation, and then I start talking. So you have your classes, and we are uh, 35627. We are 35627. And uh, it says we are in week zero one. Makes sense. How many weeks are in the semester? 18. And the 18th week will be final, so we've got 17 weeks of instruction. And there's a welcome video here. The most, third most important thing, pins should be moving. Let's write these down. Number one, spirit of adventure and exploration. Move fast and break things. I'm CEO, bitch. That's point number one. Spirit of adventure and exploration. Move fast and break things. I'm CEO, bitch. Spirit of adventure and exploration, move fast and break things. I'm CEO, bitch. That's number one. Number two is what? Syllabus. Yeah, thank you. Read the syllabus. Number three. Yeah, sure. Analytics to drive strategy, calculate your grade in all your classes. So number one is spirit of venture exploration. Move fast and break things. I'm CEO, bitch. Number two is read the syllabus. Number three is analytics to drive strategy. Calculate your grade in all of your classes. That's your job right now. If you do that and you do it well, guess what? You will make more money in life. You will not be driving a Toyota. You will be driving a BMW. Fact. Like, high probability. You get straight A's when you're an undergrad and grad, you're going to drive better cars. You're going to make more money. That's what you're here for. That's what the research shows. Despite all the liberal media talk about a liberal education, which is wonderful, let's make some money. You know? There's bills to pay. You want to live in the bad neighborhood? You want to live in the good neighborhood? You want to drive a... Eh? Car, you want to drive a safe car that's sexy. I'll take the BMW. As a side note to point number two, read the syllabus. That's a contract between you and the instructor. I have seen instructors' syllabi that do not mathematically add up to 100%. If you ever have questions, about a syllabus, and that's from an instructor with a doctorate. If you ever have questions about a syllabus, if you ever have questions or concerns about a teacher, this institution exists for you. You're the students. You are our customers. Without you, I'm doing something else. No students, no, no teaching job. Everybody here, their primary purpose is to serve you. If you ever get bad customer service, tell somebody about it. Just like if you're in a restaurant and you had a waitress or a waiter or a host who gave you a lip and was rude, like say, hey, on your way out, you'd be like to the manager, is the manager here? Hey, by, by the way, I don't know if this person's having an off night. Everybody has their bad days. I just want to give you a heads up that, man, that, that, the person who waited, served us at our table just was really pretty 
you know, not good and pretty rude. So, you know, I'm a small business owner. I just always feel a responsibility to let other small business owners know when I see one of their employees not on point. So, you know, maybe they're having a bad day, but just if that continues to happen, you might keep your eye on that. Have a good night. Nice to meet you. Right? Like, if you ever get a bad experience here at the college from somebody, because that happens. Because counselors might not care, or teachers might get an arrogant attitude, or, you know, they might not want to talk to you. If you ever feel shunned or cold-shouldered, man, we are here to take care of you and serve you. I've had that as a student. So if you ever have issues, you go talk to the dean. Sounds a little bit like... It sounds a little intimidating to me a little bit. The dean, or like you might go there if you're in trouble, like the principal. But the dean is really, you know, the next person up the totem pole. And then there, there's a dean for every division. This is the business division. And then the next dean up would be the dean of instruction, Don Lopez, longtime friend of mine. You just go talk to him. And then you have the president. And we are all here to serve you. So if there's ever any issue... You go talk to the dean. The syllabus doesn't make sense. The teacher isn't kind. So that's part of the syllabus point. How many of that's like good to know? I didn't know it when I was a student. It's like I wish somebody had told me that. Like, oh, yeah, that's a good perspective. That's called a customer service oriented attitude. So good to cultivate a customer service oriented attitude in all things you do in life. What was this video about? What did you just learn? We didn't even get to the tour yet. You did what? What did you learn? I don't want to answer it for you. What did we learn in this video? This last little chunk. Did you learn anything? Yeah, so um, give me a summary. Yeah, yeah, and if you if you aren't, what do you do? To who? And what's that person called? The dean, right? And the syllabus is a legal contract. All right. The fourth important point to know so the fourth one in your notes is you have to buy something called my IT lab and you must enroll in my IT lab by January 25th 2018 or I'm going to either drop you or if I forget to drop you I'm going to give you an F it's your responsibility it's not my responsibility it's your responsibility it's in red. It says important right at the top. If you don't enroll in my IT lab by January 25th, 2018, you're no longer in this class or you've failed this class. To do that, you need to buy the book. And so you could buy that at the Fresno City College bookstore for 79 used or 105 new, or you could buy it right here with an electronic digital copy of the textbook for $79. And we'll, we'll go through the syllabus here in a second in the next video.